everybody Sandra Expeditions here welcome back to my channel so I know it's been a few months since I posted but I just wanted to make an update so about two years ago um, I started a fast from social media and originally I was planning on the fast only lasting for six weeks and it was a way for me to take a break from social media which I felt like at the time was pretty addicting for me I spent so much time on social media especially youtube so december 26th at 6 p.m 2021 i posted on my instagram not this not not my sander expeditions instagram but my personal instagram i was like hey you know everyone like i'm gonna try to read 15 books um and honestly like when i started the when i started the fast I was like, oh shoot, like I want to read more because I was really getting getting into booktube. But I realized I just didn't have the discipline and I was like, oh, well, if I force myself to stop social media, I would read more books. So, you know, a six week challenge of reading 15 books or that's what I had, um, that's what I had like estimated ended up being two years, um, two years without social media. And actually, so today is Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to post on Christmas, but, um, yeah, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, I'll, pro I'll probably post it either later on today because, uh, I have to do a little bit of editing, um, or I'll post it tomorrow, which is the day that I'm breaking my fast. So, yeah, um, it's crazy because I never thought that I would be able to survive without social media. I remember I tried it for the first time for one week in spring of 2021 and it was almost like I was coming off of a drug um yeah it, I remember it was really hard it was really bad because I remember for every single time I always had YouTube on even if I was going to the bathroom even if I was walking on the street I was always 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 had entertainment and then going without entertainment and mind you oh dang it's two minutes already Mind you, I cut off all social media, like no TikTok, no Twitter, no Instagram, no YouTube, no Facebook. Originally, no Reddit until I was preparing to travel to Medellin and I and I needed like people's like experiences. So I was like, all right, I'm going to add Reddit for when I need it. But then I ended up adding Reddit in overall and also Team Blind, which is a, a forum also, but like it's a more of a tech forum. Um, so... You know, and also I had originally banned like all podcasts, even Spotify and Netflix. So I was like the first few months, I was like so out of the loop. Um, yeah, it was wild because I remember, what was it? March, March, 20, March, no, March 2022. I had a friend over at my place when I was living in Seattle and we were just talking, talking. And then she was like, yeah, you know, with the war happening and everything. And I'm like, what do you mean? What war? And it's wild because this, she was talking about the war uh, with um, Russia and Ukraine. And I had no idea because the first few months I was like completely cut off. Then I was like, all right, I'm going to add back in, you know, Netflix because I barely even watched Netflix to begin with. So I was like, let me add back in Netflix. I started using Spotify and started listening to podcasts like Lovely Tea. I'm originally a Joe Rogan, um, but I'm not the biggest fan anymore. He's a little bit annoying. Um, and, you know, just a bunch of other podcasts and stuff like that. I love We Said What We Said by um, Ricky Thompson. And and the, oh, I forgot their name, but yeah, We Said What We Said. I like, they're so funny. I like them. And the Receipts podcast. Just a bunch of podcasts. That's how, like, that's how I know about like trending events. Or I would just talk to my friends and they would tell me like, Oh, I'll be like, oh, okay, what's happening on social media? And then they will be like, oh, you know, soft life or, you know, like different things. So that's how I found out about events and, and like things that are happening. So yeah, I finished, um, oh, I, I wanted to talk about the positives and the negatives and then, you know, things that were neutral for me because I'm hoping to inspire people uh, who also want to take a break from social media. And in my case, like it was a real true addiction, like. 
oh my gosh, like first thing in the morning, scrolling on Instagram, like last thing at bed, scrolling on Instagram. During the day, YouTube, and honestly, before I started the fast, I had already like, uh, what do you call it? Like, I would already unsubscribed to all these toxic YouTube channels with so much drama and so much negativity. And yeah, like, I was still being recommended like certain toxic channels and um, I'm not sure how social media is right now because mind you, I haven't watched one YouTube video in two years. Like in terms of, I've watched tutorials, you know, for work or like, you know, some training or, you know, like something, a music video. I've watched, I started watching music videos like the last few months, but uh, originally I didn't even watch music videos, you know, so it would, it wouldn't be anything like on real YouTube, I would say like nothing for entertainment. Well, I guess a music video is entertainment, but yeah. Um, things that I needed, like, oh, I need to, you know, know how to tie a shoe or do this thing. All right, I have to watch a video for it. But uh, anything with, like, someone's vlog, what's happening out there. And I felt a little bit sad because I would watch small YouTubers and I would comment. And that's, you know, that's a way to connect with people. So I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't able to do that anymore. So I felt kind of bad. And I feel like I kind of, like, distanced myself from, like, a YouTube community that was slowly building because I wasn't on YouTube and I wasn't watching people's videos and I wasn't commenting, which also gets you subscribers. And also I'm not a consistent YouTube person. It's very hard when you have a thousand hobbies like I do. Um, actually my newest hobby is chess. And I got this two weeks ago when I went to Morocco. Um, for my for my for my birthday celebrate my 30th birthday yeah um team sagittarius but anyways i'm going to show you guys the Ooh. also i moved to new york um yeah i moved to new york so that's like another blessing you know uh seattle was fine but you know i'm originally born and bred new yorker so <sighs> shoot where's the book all right so this is the book that I finished. I finished it yesterday. Um, Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, after this video, I have to get going because um, it's Christmas. But I just wanted to record this ahead of time. And I probably should have brought up the books that I've read. So, dame un momento. Porque necesito un poco de tiempo. But basically, I read, uh, like, 15 books. Okay, so the books that I read, Norwegian Wood, Fahrenheit 451, The Screw Tape Letters, The Obstacle is the Way, um, The Time, The Obstacle is the Way, The Timeless Art of Turning Trials to Triumph, The Boys of My Youth, The Defining Decade, Beloved, The Burnout Society, Siddhartha, the Unbearable Lightness of Being, The Outsiders, Mer Christianity, On the Shortness of Life, which I was like, am I cheating? Because that book is like this small, but I read it twice. So, you know, um, is that 15? So this is one, two, three. All right, I'm pretty sure I read some other ones. <laughs> the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So. Yeah, I finished that January 29th, 2022, and as a man thinketh. So I, that makes 15. Like, I'm counting here. I started freaking out because I was like, all right, as a man thinketh, one, two, three, four, Yeah. The only thing I'm trying to figure out is when I started The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Uh, it says I shelved it December 11th, but, and also as a man thinketh. I don't think I started my challenge then. So yeah, so I think I'm safe. I read 15 books, uh, yeah, from December 26th all the way up until December 24th. And mind you, that is really slow. <laughs> but I was too busy living life, you know. Um, just traveling, I think I traveled for like eight months in the last two years. And mind you, none of that was posted on social media. Um, yeah, that's wild. So I'm going to go through the benefits. Uh, oh, I was going to show you my newest hobby too. All right, y'all. So my newest hobby is 
I like to make cocktails. So at my apartment, like I got like, you know, menus and stuff like that. Like I, I'm the real deal when it comes to bartending. So those are also like other hobbies that I that I picked up. You got chess, French, um, cocktails. Yeah. So I've been pretty productive. And you know, I've I like here you could see I hosted uh you know a few events at my place this is like when i just moved into my, my apartment i had some friends from college come um and like some friends from work and stuff like that and and i and i like literally showed my skills you know i got the havana club which is no longer exists in the usa but i did study abroad in cuba so and then i got ramchata so you already know and it's christmas so i got coquito I got me some coquito. <laughs> this is like so unrelated to. Uh, by the way, if you want really good coquito, I recommend Coquito Diaz. So you just go to Instagram, sip coquito Diaz, and their coquito is mad good. So y'all, I just settled my anxiety on Goodreads. I document like when I start reading and you know everything. So it says I started reading on December twenty eighth. 2021 so i'm just like oh because for a moment i was like oh my gosh like don't tell me that you know i thought i started it like december 11th or something like that and let me just verify like as a man think it too all right i started reading that december 30th all right well, okay we all good we all good all right so the positive so the positive is that you know um i avoid a lot of toxicity and addiction um because i realized on youtube there's just so much, for me, the, the main thing that really affected my life was the gender war, especially that in the black community. And I felt like that was like every single YouTuber was talking about it. And I was like, I know y'all did not bring Reddit into YouTube because I've been on Reddit for over 10 years. So I was kind of, I was already used to those type of gender wars, but I always thought it was going to stay like you know there and a lot of the subs at the time that i used to read in like 2013 stuff like that they were they're bands like they're they don't exist anymore um and stuff like that so when i started seeing that come to youtube i was like what and i remember like even people who i know like now like you know from college like i would just be mentioning stuff and they have no idea and then now it's like common you know like common knowledge type stuff um and honestly it was really just so toxic and i remember right before my fast like I don't know if it was like two months before or whatever but I just like unsubscribed from like the men the women uh even honestly I was subscribed to a lot of the people like a lot of it was like I just hit do not recommend anyone who was talking about anything that was like in the beginning like I'm sure like you know like some of these channels they're beneficial in a way but it's one of those things where you like chew the meat and spit out the bones like you don't need to be listening to this stuff every single day like every single day and the fact that i hear from different people i know that this stuff is still happening like still going on is wild to me so i avoided that and i feel like a lot of people are still stuck in these uh internet communities and the fact that i've just avoided it the last two years and that's my fear like when i go back to social media um i'm just like <sighs> Don't recommend me these channels. I don't want to see none, nothing. I just want to be on like, I just want to look at cats, kittens, philosophy, book, booktube, language YouTube, all the positive stuff, chess YouTube. Um, yeah, I put some trends, sounded vapid, and things don't seem like they've changed much, as I said. So yeah, I, I, I hear about, I've most recently known a lot about current trends in the last year, mostly because I listen to Lovely Tea on on you know she's a youtuber but she's a uh, spotify podcast and also i started listening to lipstick i started checking into lipstick alley which is social media but that was my one exception and i can't doom scroll so reddit and lipstick alley are like the only and team blind are the only social medias that i used and and team blind is the only one that i i doom scroll and team blind is really a bunch of people in tech you know complaining about you know women not making enough money uh is is my net worth high enough type stuff like 
you know, like what company has layoffs, you know, that sort of thing. And I feel like I have to kind of know what's going on with my company and the tech community because that's where I work. But then, like, you have Lipstick Alley. And I've known about Lipstick Alley for years, but I always thought it was just so toxic. But that's because, like, only when I would, like, look up a certain person, like, their their sub will come up and it'll be, like, a gossip page. But they do have a lot of, like, useful trending topics. And honestly, I feel like the posters are really funny. Um, so that is a social media, but I don't doom scroll um, Lipstick Alley either. I have to, like, search something online and then... I will look for the trending topics for that day, and then that's how I know stuff. And same thing for Reddit. I have to, like, in order for me, I can't go on Reddit's main page. That's my rule. I can only, like, search on Google for, like, a specific Reddit thing, like, things I'm looking for, and then I put, like, Reddit at the end. And then I would use that page, or I would, like, go to the, rec like, at the end of the page, the recommended posts. So that's as far as I got in terms of, like, cheating. And honestly, after, at the end of this video, or, like, at the bottom, like, in the... In the description, I'm gonna I I documented every time I felt like I may have cheated or something like that. Like you know, like someone sent me a video and I clicked it and I watched a part of it, but it was never YouTube. I always told people do not send me, you know, like the things that I watched would be. I don't think I ever really cheated. Like once the closest I got to cheating is I told my mom to play a Dave Ramsey video, but I was like I can't touch it. You got to play the video while I you know while we eat or whatever. So, yeah, but I'll post everything below. Um, I lived in the present more, which is 100% true. Uh, I was super, I was way more social uh, because I needed a way of entertain, entertainment. Also, I want to do a video about this, but I did have a Pasana retreat. And I felt like because I was already used to not um, using social media for a year and a half, when I did the retreat, they take our cell phones. And if, uh, it's like a 10-day silence retreat. They take our cell phones. And we have no access to the outside world. But I was already kind of like mentally prepared for, you know, going without my phone because I'm just so used to being more in the present. Um, I spent a lot of time socializing. I'm a very mixy person. I learned French. So the first six months of my fast, I was doing French at like two to three hours a day. So I learned French really fast. Je parle français très bien. Uh, I got into chess. That was since I moved back to New York. A few months ago and you know I've been like at mad chess meetups you know the chess forum Bryant Park uh, this is Delhi near Bryant Park where chess people meet too there's you know club chess there's like so many chess events and I, I'm, I'm at them but I'm not good so I tell people like y'all I'm just here for the vibes um, and I learned to be bored so yeah like the first few months was so hard because no social media and it was wild too because I was I was even more strict the first few months and nothing you know oh I didn't tell you guys so what got me into lipstick alley to begin with what broke me was that this uh very controversial youtuber passed away and I remember my friend he messaged me he was like r.i.p dot 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 you know this person and then I just thought you know this person did something and then you know I thought like when he told me r.i.p I thought it was like oh like this person like officially canceled off the internet so then I just you know googled or or no I, I was still eating I don't think I really like thought much about it um and then he and then I was like lol what or you know like I expected I used to have this I used to talk to this guy a lot um like like we're really cool friends and you know like he would like keep me up to date on like controversial YouTube so that's why he messaged me you know like this guy and so then I was like what happened and then he told me like oh, this dude really, really passed. So I felt like the internet must have been broken that day. So I went online and I couldn't, I couldn't use anything. I couldn't, I could only read news articles or my one exception was either Reddit and Lipstick Alley. So that's what got me into Lipstick Alley. But um, even after that, I wasn't really using it. I wasn't really using it up until last year. I mean, this year, which is 2023. So last year was 2022 when the person died, and I really started using it this year, 2023. Um, I read books, read 15 books, not a lot. Um, and my next book, actually, is The Master and the Margarita. So I got that book. Actually, I have these books. The Master and the Margarita. I got Epictetus. Um, Self-knowledge. So after Master and the Margarita, I think I'm going to read either Verity 
or oh shoot it's not here uh the song of achilles it's over there on my bookshelf um uh, and then i have this book oh i have the the top five regrets of the dying um but top five regrets of the dying and epictetus those are books i'm just gonna read like when i want a little bit of knowledge like here and there i i've decided i'm only gonna read books that i want to read now like before i was reading books that i felt like you know could give me overall knowledge i don't know the books that I made a book list last night, like I, I already had it, these books on my list, but I was like, okay, for 2024, I'm like, these are the books that after this year, if I read all these books, I don't really care about other books anymore. Like these are the books that I care about. <laughs> so anything else after that is like, this year is like the year and any book after that, I'm like, it's whatever, you know, like there's not that many books left for, there's, there's always a lot of books, but there's not that many books left. That I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to read that. Because I feel like I've read a lot. And the last, you know, it's wild. I felt like the 15 books that I read, none of them really touched me. You know, really touched my soul. Um, unfortunately, you know, they were all kind of mediocre in a way. Uh, yeah, I feel like the last really good book I read was The Picture of Dorian Gray, which was in 2021. Um, so I really want to get back to classics, classics. All right. <sighs> Uh, I kept in contact with my friends, I threw parties, I traveled without posting or seeking validation. So the thing is, I used to, I remember when I posted on Instagram, on my personal Instagram, I used to, like, after I made a post, I would, like, exit out, because I didn't want to see, you know, who liked my pictures or what. And then, you know, when I go, when I went back, I would see, like, all these likes, and I remember I felt, I felt good. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, all these people like, you know, my post. But I'm like, why do I, am I, why am I relying on people's validation? And I felt like, I'm like, well, what happens if I only get a small amount of likes? You know, am I going to feel the opposite? So I felt like I haven't had to deal with that for two whole years. Um, and I will say there have been times where I had to open Instagram because, you know, when you're traveling, everyone wants your Instagram. So I'm like, okay, I'll add you. But mind you, I don't use Instagram. I'm not on it. Or I would, t I would explain to people, like, just give me your number. And then they would look at me sus because they're like, oh, you don't want to give me your Instagram? Which, nine times out of ten, no, because I don't know you, and we're not even friends. Um, but for just, you know, to not, just to not cause nothing, I'm just like, alright, here's my Instagram. Uh, yeah. And, and I feel like I see people more as, like, who they are instead of, you know, like, having these preconceived notions. Like, oh, I felt like before my fast... I was, I had a lot of more negative views of men in general. Uh, <laughs> damn, this, this sounds really bad. I don't want to say this. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I felt like because I was seeing, like, all, especially, like, black guys, I was seeing all these black men on YouTube. And I've been on YouTube for so long, like, so long. Honestly, I've been on YouTube since 2006. So I've seen some of the wildest stuff. And, you know, I didn't even know, like, guys in my real life aren't, like, the, for the most part, 9 times out of 10, aren't, like, the people I see online who say these really bad things about other black women. And then, you know, the more I saw it over the pandemic, I was just like, yeah, I don't even want to associate, you know? Um, but, yeah, but once I got back to reality, you know, I was like, wait, I gotta chill. Like, this is just toxic internet culture. And, um, most of my social circle is black anyway, so there's not really much I can do. <laughs> and honestly, like, I have a lot of, you know, guy friends and, you know, we talk about these things and I'm a person where I like to talk, I like to, I like to talk about real topics and I'm a person like, you know, with my, with my female friends, my male friends, everyone, everyone knows that like, if there's a general opinion, I'm going to play devil's advocate on something or I'm going to like really like challenge that person like what do you mean you're anti-capitalist like what does that mean you know or what do you mean you're a feminist what does that even mean or what do you mean you know men are like this or women are like this like you know um it's wild because some people think I have really strong views and I don't have strong views at all I'm like one of the most neutral people but because I know all the arguments and I want to see people like really like I want to see people like really explain their point and why they think what they think. So, of course, like if you're telling me, you know, men are 
this this way or that way. I'm like, all right, well, you know, give me an example of this. Or what if, you know, you could see things this way? Or, you know, like, same thing for my guy friends. I'm just like, especially my guy friends, I really drag them and I go hard. And I'm like, I say the wildest stuff just to see, like, what they would say back in terms of, you know, their own opinions. So I'm actually, I'm just a pretty neutral person. I don't really have strong opinions, unfortunately. Um, yeah. <sighs> All right, negatives. I missed a lot of current events, which is true. Um, I don't know what's happening out there in the world. I don't even, I don't really know. If it's not on any of the things that I mentioned, I don't know about it. I don't know trending topics unless Lovely T talks about it or it's trending on Lipstick Alley. Like, or my friends in real life tell me or I find out at work. You know, someone mentions, you know, oh, the war, you know, something like that. Oh my gosh, so I almost broke my fast this summer because I moved back to New York and I felt like all my social circle was just people from my company and honestly after a while just being around the same tech individuals is very draining and I felt like I wanted to be around real authentic New Yorkers again and a lot of the people I was around were all transplants and no, I missed the people I knew from college and everything. So I was just like, oh my gosh, I almost quit because I was just like, yo, I need to post on Instagram to let all my friends in college know. Or my friends, my closest friends, they know I'm back in New York because I talk to them consistently. But like, some of them are, are in different places and stuff like that. Like, I'm talking about like my acquaintances. You know, I wanted to like get back into the culture. And I couldn't even get invited to events because I because no one knew I was here and I couldn't let people know I was here unless I like did a mass post and was like, hey everybody, I'm back, you know? Um, and I was lonely because of that. Uh, I miss a lot of summer events and gatherings. I miss dating also. Well, this one's hard because I was traveling like a lot. So it was hard to date. So when I got back to New York, I think for the first month, I think I went on like five dates. And then I was just so disappointed, so I just, like, stopped dating. And then I was traveling a little bit. I didn't start dating again until, literally, I had a friend here. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm going, I'm dating around. And I think this was October. And then she inspired me to be like, all right, now that I've finished traveling again for the summer, I'm like, I'm lonely, you know. So I started dating this other person for, like, actually not even dating. Just talking. We were just talking. For like a month and then I went to Afrotech and you know I, I got some leads uh, the leads are still leading but some of the dudes are in different states so I'm just like and there's one guy here but he's confusing because it's an awkward situation where um, we're talking but he's also trying to get a referral at my company so I'm just like Listen, we gotta do one or the other. I hope you get a referral. Okay, Gucci. Like, you know, it's good. Like, I helped him with that. And then I'm thinking, alright, I'm, I'm moving on to, you know, other prospects. And then, you know, he's continuing, like, reaching out and stuff like that. So, and then also, you know, I met other leads at... I've been trying to meet leads in real life. So, you know, I've been at the Vipassana meditation retreat. I'm like, I don't want to do online dating anymore. Like, I want to meet people. Like, after Afrotech, I was like, this is it. This is it. Like, people in real life. I just like real life humans that I meet in person. I don't, this online stuff, it's just not the same. It's not the same uh, as that real person, you know. So, yeah, but, uh, meditation leads and then this. But, like, no concrete real leads right now. Yeah, just talking. Uh, harder adding new friends when traveling, miss smaller YouTubers. Yeah, I think I talked about this. I missed I missed being able to comment on smaller YouTube channels and other smaller YouTubers. Um, anyways, this video is so long, so um <laughs> it's it's really hard to talk about, you know, like this is this is two whole years, so it's hard to put it all in a in a short video. Um but at the end of the day I'm glad I did it. Uh, I think that you should do it too. You should try it, you know, for at least a week and you'll see how addicted you are. Like, this is what these companies do. You know, they, they make more money when you stay on these apps. And, you know, this really kind of like 
destroys your soul in a way. Because uh, I remember back when, you know, back when I was using social media, I don't know, I felt so, like, dead inside and so crazy because I feel the complete opposite. I feel so full. Um, you know, like, I feel so present. I feel happy and at peace, you know? Meditation has helped with that, but also, like, just living a peaceful life. So I'm torn because I'm just... At one, one moment, I'm so excited to post everything on social media again. Like, all my travels, you know, my TED Talks, like, hitting people up. Like, I'm about to be at this event. Join me here. I'm about to be here. Join me here. How about you, you know, invite me to your thing? Oh, I remember you from college. You're cute. Like, let's link. Um, but at the same time, it's like, the times that I've opened my Instagram app, I've randomly seen, like, someone getting engaged and someone pregnant. Literally today, I was checking to message the Coquito people on their Instagram. And the first thing that popped up was someone I knew from college. And, you know, they had their picture with their husband and their baby. And I was like, wow, this is wild. I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I, I and think and this is wild because I'm at that age too where it happens. But thankfully in New York things happen a lot later compared to other places. So most people I know are single, but I am at a critical age now. Uh yeah. Yeah. <sighs> uh learned a lot about myself. I learned to have self control. Um, I think I mentioned this already, like I've noticed that these online communities, like, you know, like the gender war, for example, it, it keeps people in these bubbles, these silos. And not even just that, like this whole left wing, that's why I was kind of tired of Joe Rogan because I'm like, bro, this is, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, when I used to watch you back in the day, because I didn't even watch him like back in the day, like, I started watching him January 2019, especially after that Elon Musk interview. So I'm not even like an old head. But I felt like his guests were a lot more high quality. Like, I felt like I was actually getting useful information. They were all so unique. And then now I feel like so many of his guests are pandering. And if they're not pandering, he's, like, trying to spin a narrative about this is the left and this is the right and this is woke. And I'm like, you... and I realized, I see this with my family. Like, you know, I, I, I'm going to go home, like, after this video. And, you know, like, I know certain family members are going to be like, Oh, you got to be careful of this because, you know, whatever reason, you know, they they watch these YouTubers and, you know, you got to prep for this or I don't know, just, just different things. And I feel like social media is just so not real and it has people like trying to be on teams because they want to find value in life. Um, and, you know, value comes from like within. I'm going to do a video about why you have to do the Vipassana meditation retreat. Like it is life-changing but um even if you don't meditate like re regardless like friends family experiences you know like you have to live life in reality uh yeah and i felt like a lot of young people that i talked to you know even at my company i'm, I'm like i mentor you know like some of the early 20s peeps and you know some of the stuff they say i'm like i think it's pretty wild and i'm like you have to chill a little bit. Like, I don't think it's that deep, you know? Like, you're getting really offended. And I, I, I don't want to, like, invalidate their opinions, but some things they say, I'm like, well, have you seen it in this way? But, you know, I do understand the brain at that age is very... It's, like, going through a lot of stuff. Like, it's, it's at a critical development point in time. So, like, you know, it hasn't really been able to settle and, like, maybe not think as clearly... Or, I don't know, maybe just, like, because the brain is so passion-driven. So, maybe. But I feel like social media, like, especially TikTok. I'm so glad I never got into TikTok. Because it just, the things people say are wild. I feel like it creates so many so much animosity between, like, young men, young women, um, especially. That's, that's as much as I know about. And, you know, like, the left, the right, like... You know, the wildest things, like, oh my gosh. So yeah, like I said, give it a try. Thank you all so much for watching this long video. 
most likely will not get watched. Literally, most videos are probably watched the first two, three minutes, but... Listen, as long as I get this video recorded and I post it. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, I'll be back with, like, my, um, my goals for the new year and, you know, language updates, my French update. Yeah. All right. Que tenga buen día. Feliz Navidad. Que estén bien. Y sí. Ciao. Uh, definitely do your social media fast. Still will play. Adios.